Hey everyone, welcome to Bible, but first let's stand up and we're going to sing and dance. person. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Gergen. I love it. Too funny. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go over our Bible verse, please. All right, ready, begin. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. You know, just like a butterfly, they've got that old life, they've got the little, you know, you're the little caterpillar, and he totally sheds all that off and becomes something brand new. Not, not the same caterpillar, but a brand new thing, a brand new butterfly. Not a brand new caterpillar, a brand new butterfly. Something totally different. And that's what's so awesome about this. One more time. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new creation. The old is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Awesome. Also, which will help you remember that is to do your penmanship page, which you need to be doing. All right. Okay. Well, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about after Jesus came and he saw the disciples up in the upper room. Later on, they end up going to the Sea of Galilee because they were told, Jesus had told them, I will meet you there. I will be there. 
So the disciples started on their way going there and just think of what they're talking about. Now remember, they're walking. They're doing a lot of walking. And I want to show you the map. The thing is down here, if you had the map it comes down here, Jerusalem is down here. So they're making this long walk back up to Galilee. Here's Nazareth where Jesus uh, lived. All right, so they've got this long walk to go to see, to meet Jesus. And just think of the talking that went on. Are you kidding? I can't believe it. He, we saw him. Just think of the excitement. And then he says they're going to meet him again. Woo! Gosh, that'd be awesome. It'd be just so awesome to do. Well, one evening while they were there together on the, the lake, you know, Peter, Peter right now is still not feeling good. He's not feeling good about what he did. He's really upset. And, you know, Jesus really hasn't said anything to him at all. And so he's not feeling good about any of this and how he denied Jesus three times. So he probably is just kind of wondering, you know, what is Jesus going to say to him? Is Jesus going to talk to him? Does Jesus forgive him? He's got a lot that he's been thinking of. But I found these pictures of the Sea of Galilee. And what's interesting is it's kind of a lake more than it is a sea. All right, look at, you know, it's big. All right. And here's kind of one of the boats that they, they were on, that they had. It's just a wooden boat. It didn't have a place for you to go inside and, you know, get out of the cold or get out of the, the rain. So, and there are probably just some uh, benches to sit on, a place to put their nets. There's no motor on it. Okay. So this is the kind of boat that they would have gone on. And here is the Sea of Galilee, which is pretty neat. But, you know, it's still a long ways to go across. So I wanted to kind of show you where it is in, in um, Israel, because this is Israel. All right. It is in Israel. I wanted to show you, too, um, where, you know, you've got Nazareth. Now, here's Cana. Now, Cana, remember, um, is where he turned water into wine. Kind of cool, huh? So, anyway, so I wanted to kind of show you that. So, here they are. They are on the, um, on the shore. They're kind of waiting around. And Peter's feeling this. Oh, gosh, he's anxious. He doesn't know what Jesus is, is thinking. He doesn't know what's going to happen. And is Jesus going to talk to him? And so he decides, you know, that they're going to go fishing. Okay? So they go fishing. And the best time to go fishing is at night. Okay? I don't know if you know that, but it is. Because you don't want the fish to see the boat. You don't want the fish to see you. So the best time to go is at night. And especially when you put down your nets, it's going to be dark and the fish don't see it. So they've been going on all night long. And they're probably tired. And nothing's happened. You know, they're going, oh, whatever. And the thing is, before they met Jesus and before they became a disciple of Jesus, this was their job. They were fishermen. That was how, that was their livelihood. That's how they made money is they were fishermen and they'd go to the shore and people would buy fish from them. So they're pros at what they're doing. They know what to do. They know what side of the boat. They know what time to go. But um, all of a sudden, and they probably all night long been going to different spots, okay? Now, as they're kind of done and they're, they're getting closer to the, the shore and they're finished and they're tired, they see this man and he kind of yells to them. He says, children, have you caught anything? And they go, no, no, we haven't caught a thing, not one thing. And he goes, well, you know, throw your nets on the right side and you will get plenty of fish, the man said. They probably looked at each other going, what does he know? He's not a fisherman. Who is this guy? We're, we're fishermen. We know what we're doing. That oh, you know what? Why not? You know, what do we have to lose? Let's do it. And so they did, in fact. And as soon as their nets hit, as soon as it hit, they got so many fish that they almost tipped over. So I wanted to show you. It's just a quickie. Huh? Who's that? Have you 
caught anything. No, we haven't caught a single fish. Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. What is he talking about? We've been fishing all night. Apparently off the wrong side of the boat. There's nothing to lose. What makes him think this is going to work? I have been running you so notice hard they do earth, not know who that guy no is. Anywhere near here. That is a fact. <laughs> here so they their boat is practically tipping over with all of this fish isn't this crazy and that's just a look at this boat it's it's wooden it's not going to hold a lot and the boat almost starts to tip over and all at once john looks over to the shore and he goes oh my gosh look it's the lord peter it's the lord look Jesus had come to help them again. Look at this again. He comes to help them. And Peter took one look at Jesus and he jumped into the water and he swam ashore. There he goes. Peter's swimming to shore. Isn't that awesome? Look at the fish. You know, and sometimes Peter, we've talked a lot about Peter. I love Peter. But, you know, sometimes he just doesn't even think, man, he's jumping in that water and he's going to Jesus, which I think is awesome. And the rest of the disciples stayed in the boat and they continued to struggle with this great catch of fish as Peter is going to the shore to see Jesus. Isn't that terrific? That is so terrific. Let's see. So here we go. Jesus on the shore. And when the disciples got to the shore, they all crowded around Jesus and telling them how glad they were. And, you know, it was just like you're seeing all your best friends. And that's what this was like. You know, slapping each other on the back and hugging each other and totally excited to see each other. You're getting all your best friends back together again, which I love. I've got the greatest friends. And when we get together after we've seen each other, we haven't seen each other in a long time, oh my gosh. We laugh, we giggle, we do crazy little things. And we just have a lot of fun together. And that's what they're doing. And as they came out, they, oh, they smelled something wonderful. Jesus had already started making them breakfast. And he goes, come on, bring some more fish you've caught also, and we will make some more. Wait a minute. Jesus is serving them. We should be serving him, but look what he's doing. He's taking care of the disciples. He's bringing them in. He's getting them together. And let me do something wonderful for you, and I'm going to make you breakfast. This is the Lord. They should be making him breakfast. But that's not how God works. He serves us. He takes care of us, and that's what he wants to do. So he's making them breakfast. And they all get up there. Come on now. Come and have breakfast. And he served them bread and fish. Now, this was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he rose from the dead. Remember, he, he, that first night, he appeared in the upper room. And then eight days later, he appeared with Thomas. And so now this is the third time they've gotten together. Well, after breakfast, while the other disciples were cleaning up the remains of the food and taking care of the catch fish, Jesus wanted to have a quiet little talk with Peter. Oh, whoa. Peter's going, whoa, what's he going to talk about? Peter had never gotten over that awful night when he had denied Jesus three times. And then he also remembered how he bragged to Jesus, how of course I would never, ever deny you, Lord. I will never go back on you. Well, 
That didn't happen, did he? He did ask God to forgive him, of course, but he still often wondered, how does Jesus feel about him? What is Jesus going to think about him? What is Jesus going to say to him? Well, as Peter and, and Jesus sat together on the beach apart from the others, Jesus turned his eyes to Peter and he gently said to him, Simon, do you love me more than these? Perhaps he pointed to James and John and Thomas and all the rest. And I want you to remember, remember his name was Simon and Jesus changed it to Peter the Rock. But now he's calling him by his old name. Simon, do you love me more than these? And he might be pointing to the disciples. Yes, Lord, he replied, you know I, I'm your friend. Well, then you need to feed and care for my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus knew he would soon be going back to heaven and leaving his flock. And he wanted Peter to help take care of him. He wanted Peter to become the good shepherd and help teach his word to new Christians. Jesus looked at Peter a second time and quietly said, Simon, do you really love me even more than your boats and your, your fish? Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter answered. You know I'm your friend. Well, then you need to take care of my sheep, Jesus said. Jesus meant that Peter must help care for everyone that believes in him. He wanted Peter to help to grow the, the church and to get everyone strong in their belief of him. Once more, Jesus asked him, Simon, are you sure you're my friend? Do you really love me? Oh my gosh, Peter was so sad and hurt that Jesus had to ask him a third time. <gasps> a third time. Oh my gosh, just like he denied Jesus three times, Jesus had to ask him three times. And once more, Peter assured him, Lord, you know my heart and you know I'm your friend. I do not deserve you, Lord. I do not deserve your confidence, but I love you and I always will. And Jesus said, well then, feed my little sheep, tend to them, take care of them, lead them, guide them. And you know what? In later years, that's exactly what Peter did. He became a good shepherd. He never forgot the Lord's command to take care of his lambs and sheep. Just like Jesus asks us, doesn't he ask us, do you really love me? Oh, of course I do, Lord, of course I love you. No, no, no. Do you really love me? Are you going to guide? Are you going to talk about me? Are you going to love me? Are you going to defend me? Are you going to help others know me? Ooh, we got to think about that, don't we? You know, sometimes we have to think about it. We go, of course I love you, Lord. Of course, of course I do. Do you really think about that? And Peter here, God knew his heart. He did know his heart. And that morning on the seashore, Jesus ended his conversation with Peter by saying, follow me. Sometimes the following every day, even the little things may prove to be hard. Peter's going to have a tough go of this. He is going to be a little, for years, Peter's going to be the leader of the Christians. He's going to help them and he's going to teach them. And he's going to guide them. That's a tough job. That is going to be hard. But you know what? After denying him three times and then telling him he loved him three times, God knows his heart. Jesus knows Peter's heart and knew that Peter would do exactly what he needed to do. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then feed my lambs. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? 
Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. So, sorry, I get a little teary-eyed. I was reading a story and to my kids, and I get a little teary-eyed when I think of Peter coming to him and saying, do you love me? And I said, they're going, what would I do? And he, he just cried and said, yes, I do. I, I now understand. I now believe. And I hope you guys do too. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you've given us and all that you've done for us. I mean, Lord, just dying on that cross and that horrible death. Thank you so much, Lord. And then rising again and going to heaven to make a place for us. It's awesome. We never asked for this, Lord. You just came and you gave it to us. That's all we need to do is to believe in you. And we thank you so much, Lord God. Lord, I just pray for all of for our school. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to sit and still talk about you and to reach out to our kids and have all this technology that we can still talk to them. That just warms my heart when I can still talk to, to all my kids, Lord. And I thank you for that. So, Lord God, I just pray you bless the rest of our day and bring us back here again tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Love you all.